I started on this wedding highlight. Then I started dissecting different, uh, like, portions of, of what happened that day. The ceremony, the big kiss, the rehearsal, the speeches, you know. Then interviews, that was like a bonus thing to add some story to it. And then after I got done with those three segments, I made like a wedding documentary. And then I went back to the wedding highlight after that to make a more condensed version that was more sendable as social media, which is what we're on. Pretty much did like this this beginning part where I used to let tan right here. And then I started doing the other different sequ sequences. So um, I'll just show you a little bit real quick. When Lizzie came home and she told me that she was on Cody, um, she told me he was very shy and um, he didn't talk at all um, during the dinner. And then, of course, when we met Cody, that was oh, not That's Cody. a lie. That's yeah, a that's, lie. Cody's not shy. We didn't think uh, Cody would ever get anybody really as sweet as you are. What she said right there. So I had adjusted what she had said because I know she wasn't trying to sound mean. But it did sound a, a slightly mean. She uh, just flat out said she didn't think he would get anyone, especially not anyone as sweet as you. Which I didn't want to risk there being some awkward tension, so I adjusted it in a way where it sounded more lighthearted. Didn't think it, he would get anyone as sweet as you. I mean, maybe. I was wrong for doing that, but it just it felt like something I should do. Um, let's speed through this a little bit more. Lots of scenery shots. Um, he ends up playing the uh, harmonica at the very end of the day, which I almost forgot to put that into the uh, the videos that I sent off, which I haven't sent them off yet, but they're all prepared to go. I put all the footage on a Blu-ray, and I'm going to email them the copies too just in case one they don't have a blu-ray or two something happens to their blu-ray also I don't think you can pull off the footage off that so if they want to share like the short one the highlight one on social media social media that'll be easier because that's kind of what I was going with the wedding highlight you could share on social media the wedding documentary would be more personal since the wedding documentary is an hour long which is about five gigabytes so it might be a little bit harder to to share while the wedding highlight is under a gigabyte. It's like half a gigabyte. So, um, I really like this part because it kind of just flows with the, uh, well, this part coming up here. It really flows with what they say and the thought of their next generation and the future, you know. Well, we love them both and we're just yes, we do. looking forward to the future years. You are one of the best things that's ever happened to Cody. And it makes me want to cry when I think about how good you are to him. He's going to be a challenge. He knows it. I know it. We all know it. But be patient because he's a wonderful man. His dad would be so proud of him. I'm sorry he couldn't be here today because he would absolutely love you and he would adore Nora. Now that was a tear jerker moment. That was the last interview before we start <coughs> shooting, I think, the rehearsal. Uh, my girlfriend was bawling her eyes out, and by the end of it, uh, the mother was bawling her eyes out too. I kind of cut it short for the wedding highlight. Then I go on to the speeches with the friends. It was awkward to try to shoot the guys getting ready because they were in the bathroom. And uh, some of them didn't like it. So the the wedding uh, the wedding highlight, I left a little bit more raw than um, I did the wedding documentary because it was the last thing I did. I thought as long as I did really get on the wedding documentary and like the wedding highlight goes by so quick that you would have to be really really paying attention to notice what I notice I feel like and maybe I'll adjust a little bit more for myself I don't know I mean for the most part it's alright it's just 
And this 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 goes with the wedding documentary and how it was kind of rough. All right, so out outside wasn't so bad. It was pretty good lighting, but um, right here. Okay, this is con a shot with the Canon EOS R, which is supposed to be a really really good camera, and that image is blown out very very pink very very pink horribly pink like all the Canon EOS's EOS R's footage was blown out really pink and I had made my own LUTs and tried to throw them on there but something I learned which is one of the reasons why the next camera I get is going to be a cinema camera is because I was originally going to get a DSLR, but doing some research, I found out that it, it's almost kind of common sense, but no one really teaches this to you. But <coughs> DSLRs might be good for recording video, but they're made for, for pictures. So when they encode or decode, I think encode, so when they encode the footage and, you know, send it to like your computer you're taking away a lot of the information to play with uh, that you don't necessarily want to keep I mean that you don't necessarily want to lose and um, they don't do that with pictures and that's why you can take such great pictures but with a cinema camera it's kind of vice versa I don't even know if it does any photos but regardless with the videos which don't get me wrong they're huge files but it gives you a lot more information to work with well, basically what I had to do with the Canon EOS's um, footage I can at first I thought the lots looked good and then I realized it was kind of making the, the the face and all the, the details kind of blocky so really all I could do is to try to bring down the saturation and just tone every single thing down to make it look a little bit more consumable now with my camera we oh by the way brought four cameras the JVC my camera the Osmo and then his camera the Canon EOS and the Sony All right. this is the Sony which actually came out pretty well. Didn't really have any issues with that. Didn't really need to adjust it very much, but it only shot really one angle. It was this angle. Okay, that was that was my shot, which is still a little blown out, but I I had a lot more room to adjust. Okay. This is where I most uh, mostly spent my time. It was mostly like that looks very soft and um, angelic, you know. Nothing's really super blown out. Everything looks pretty, pretty, you know. But then, yeah, his is very blown out. And don't get me wrong, the Osmo sometimes did have it super pink. Like, I'm pretty sure this was with the Osmo. And I guess it's just because there's so much lights going on, I'm not sure. Let's dig in a little deeper. So now, actually, we can just look at the wedding documentary. Alright. So, the wedding documentary, I start with the interviews. Um, there's so many things. I add some music in the background of everything, just to add some, uh, some motion. Um, I thought where I should be was in the back, so I was heading that way, but honestly, I think I should have stayed up at the front. This is my first wedding, so I had a plan. And for the most part, for the most part, I went with that plan, but then there was moments where I was like, maybe that wasn't a good idea. And that's why it was another reason why it was a good idea to bring so many cameras. 
This is another Kenny of us, our uh, shot. And I did a lot of desaturating, but it was really hard to mess with. Like, yeah, this is this is all the EOS footage that I was trying to to make it look better. And it was just it was very hard without like distorting the image. Like even his face looks a little smudgy. And I, I hate when my images look smudgy. But then you look at mine and the color's pretty good, you can see the details pretty good, you know, everything looks good. It's so weird because the Canon OS R is supposed to be a super expensive camera, super good camera, it was like $1,000, and then my Osmo, granted it was $800, but that was a bundle. I think alone, it might have been, I want to say $600, you know, almost half the price. Maybe half the price now. <coughs> And there was a point when they were getting close to the end. Let's go ahead and mute that. Sorry. Right. So this was done with the JVC camera. And that one's also worth like a thousand dollars, but I can't really get to sell it, but it's about the same quality. And I mean, it's a video camera, you know, so... Of course, with the JVC camera, I don't think I had to do much color correcting. Most of the issues um, were just the bad shots that my girlfriend was pulling off. Uh, and, and that was a good angle. But she was a little shaky, so it made that a little bit harder to make it look good. I could have tried to do warp stabilization, but it could have been more of a headache. And once you do some, like, scaling stuff, it won't let you. It's complicated. Alright, the rehearsal. I made that look pretty good. I, I did a pretty decent job of meshing this pretty well because that was the Canon and that was the Osmo. So they almost look the exact same, but I mostly had to do desaturating. And I was trying to bounce back and forth the angle so, you know, you weren't just stuck looking at the support thing. And one thing I wish I would have done when I was recording this is those two things on both, side of, on both sides of the Swanica thing. I wish I would have taken those down and recorded like that because one thing that I think kind of sucked is that a lot of times those two things would cover the bride or groom's face which, you know, it's their night, so you want to see their reactions and such. That's your dad. Okay. Oh, yeah, um, before I forget. Okay, so the, the, the speeches. So that was supposed to, the audio was supposed to be recorded through the DJ, the DJ's, uh, mix table. None of it was recorded. Not sure what happened, not sure if the DJ didn't plug it up right, not sure if Malachi accidentally turned it off and I turned it on. Not sure what happened. And then, um, so I didn't get any audio. I was freaking out. But luckily enough, Malachi did actually plug up his professional mic, which honestly does not sound that bad. You know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a boom mic, but it barely catches any of the audience. It mostly catches the, the people speaking, which was awesome. It's a lifesaver there, you know. Lifesaver having the extra mic. Lifesaver having extra cameras just in case I didn't catch something because there was times I didn't catch things or let's say there was two cameras I I jumped in front of one of my cameramen. You know. Bounceability there. But yeah, some of these songs got recorded well and some of them didn't so I had to overlay. I had to find the songs on the internet which was pretty hard. Mm, not super hard. JC knew like one or two songs and then I searched up 
wedding song with mom and it was like the number one song you know so I kind of I kind of lucked out there and then uh, there is a moment that I didn't catch very well I think it's right okay they didn't end up dancing together very long so right here so the cake cutting moment as you can see right there the photographer's heads in my way I didn't realize the cake was being cut, and um, I had to. See if I can get there. Okay. I'm gonna mute this real quick. So yeah, um, they they had gotten in the, the the photographer had gotten in the way of my shots a bunch there, and um, I had to turn down some a lot of the audio there because the auto peaked really bad because I was doing onboard audio. And there was a moment after this that they actually signed the documents saying that they were married, and that turned out kind of bad, but. I mean, I still got the mean cake, so I still got the important moment. It just the reason I kept I kept the uh, like running through the audience because honestly I kind of thought that looked kind of cinematic, and that's one of the pluses about the Osmo is if it wasn't pre-stabilized, you know, it probably would looked just jittery and stuff. But it looked so dynamic, just going through the audience and then bam, you're at the cake, and then here, I. Uh, did normal speed, then I slowed it down by a bunch, and then I sped it up really quick, just to kind of make it interesting. I still kept that same music going on. I actually, just listen to it. I try my best to keep my mind in my head straight. I've been feeling as of late that all I want to do is go. Yeah, and then you see her dancing, sort of. She was kind of just amazed at the camera, so she didn't dance too much, and I didn't, I don't know, I get awkward very easily. Um, but, yeah, you can even kind of see that, uh, that kind of grubby look on some of these images and how, like, the color's so different. Like, they had so much going on with different colors, it was... It was hard. But, um, that blue clip at the end of all this green stuff is the harmonica part, and right before that is my little Cody and Lizzie thing that I made on After Effects. 
which that was kind of like my bam this is the end but kind of my thought of like just throwing it on on the end other than just being lazy is <laughs> I kind of thought that they would kind of like forget about it and and then see that I'm like oh yeah he did that also this is this is very raw um, but it doesn't look that bad it looks very colorful I don't know what I'm hoping for is either my client really loves this or two they like it but would like a couple things adjusted and then I adjust them and send them a new copy I don't want them to have some of the that they don't enjoy but the reason why one of the reasons why I just went ahead and gave them these products is because I put a lot of work into them and I, at this point I felt like it was small personal things that I was adjusting small personal things that I couldn't really tell 100% if it was making it worse or better anymore also before I end this sorry so when when I can I can I get okay so this is shot with the cannon and I, I did have a lot more of the cannon footage but I decided to get rid of some of it because for some reason with some of the footage it would lag behind his his mouth and then towards the end which is the part I kept it would finally catch up so there's a bunch of technical difficulties that was a bit of a nuisance but I think at the end of the day I made pretty good products I when, when I threw this together I had no clue I was even gonna be able to make an hours worth of footage I thought maybe I'll be able to throw together 30 minutes I don't know and then my client was like 30 minutes really we shot a lot and I, I guess it was just really just because it was my first time so I didn't realize how much I shot like I knew I shot like a day's worth but I thought a lot of that was garbage not saying it was like poorly recorded I just thought because I know that I recorded a lot of extra stuff so I thought most of it was extra stuff and there was a very small portion that wasn't and therefore I could maybe only do 30 like there was that and I only had a week to plan so I was like there's no way I'm gonna have enough footage to come up with <coughs> an hour on a, a one week notice be my first time wedding you know you know the odds were against me but I think I did a pretty decent job. Um, uh, please uh, subscribe and smash the bell icon. And thank you for watching. I'm going to go ahead and throw that outro out. As far as other updates, I am hopefully going to be working on a music video with Trent again and QP. QP is probably going to be first because Trent has flaked a couple times. And I'm supposed to be working on it with a another videographer that I'm collaborating with and I am engaged now so there's that so see you later